nestled between the expansive plains of what is now Pakistan and northwest India, the Indus Valley civilization holds a special place in the annals of ancient history. Flourishing around 2500 BCE, it was a society marked by its unique culture, sophisticated urban planning and technological prowess. This wasn't just a collection of settlements, but an entire civilization that mirrored the contemporary societies of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. One of the most notable aspects of the Indus Valley society was its urbanization. Cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa weren't mere villages, but bustling urban centers. Their city designs were startlingly advanced for their time. Streets were laid out in a grid pattern and houses were made of uniform baked bricks, an indication of a centralized authority and planning. The drainage systems in these cities were so efficient that they can give our modern sewer systems a run for their money. These weren't primitive people, but a society that valued hygiene, organization, and forward thinking. Yet, what stands out even more than their advancements is the script they left behind. This script, undeciphered to this day, offers a tantalizing puzzle for historians and linguists. Thousands of seals have been discovered adorned with this unique script. It is a testament to a rich language, a window into their thoughts, beliefs, and values. But until we can crack the code, much of their daily life and philosophies remain an enigma. Despite their sophistication, the Indus Valley civilization began to decline around 1900 BCE. This wasn't a slow descent, but a rather rapid dwindling leading historians and archaeologists on a quest to find out why. Some theories suggest a massive tectonic event altered the course of their life-giving rivers. The once fertile plains may have become arid, making agriculture, which was the backbone of their society, increasingly difficult. This environmental challenge could have spurred mass migrations to more fertile areas, leading to a rapid depopulation of the urban centers, yet nature might not be the sole culprit. Another theory is that of external invasions. Some historians suggest that a new wave of immigrants, possibly the Aryans, came into the region, leading to cultural and societal shifts. While there isn't conclusive evidence to fully back this theory, it remains a possibility. In the end, the downfall of the Indus Valley civilization is a mosaic of factors, a confluence of environmental challenges, potential external threats, and perhaps even internal strife. Their decline serves as a haunting reminder that even the most advanced and sophisticated societies can be vulnerable to a combination of challenges. The remnants of their cities, artifacts, and the undeciphered script they left behind are silent witnesses to a past that was both glorious and, ultimately, ephemeral. The Mediterranean Sea, with its azure waters and sun-kissed shores, has been a cradle for many ancient civilizations, but few are as enigmatic and captivating as the Minoans of Crete. Dating back to roughly 3000 BCE, the Minoans are often considered Europe's first advanced civilization, and their influence is visible in various facets of history. Crete, a rugged island south of Greece, became the epicenter of Minoan culture. The civilization is named after the legendary King Minos, a figure intricately connected with the myth of the Minotaur and the Labyrinth. It's a tale of intrigue where a fearsome beast roamed within an intricate maze, demanding annual sacrifices until the hero, Theseus, with the help of Minos' daughter Ariadne, ventured in to end its reign of terror. While this is steeped in mythology, it speaks to the rich tapestry of stories and beliefs that emanated from this ancient society. Architecturally, the Minoans were masters. The palace complexes, most notably the one at Knossos, were sprawling and labyrinthine, perhaps inspiring the myths themselves. These weren't just royal residences, but centers of administrative, religious, and economic activity. Their vibrant frescoes found within these palaces provide a colorful insight into Minoan life. Scenes of ritualistic ceremonies, marine life, and even sports like bull leaping bring the Minoans' world to life, showcasing a society deeply connected to both the sea and their spiritual beliefs. Trade was the lifeblood of the Minoan civilization, their strategic location in the Mediterranean made them a pivotal maritime power. Artifacts from Egypt, the Levant, and even Mesopotamia have been unearthed in Crete, while Minoan pottery has been discovered as far afield as Turkey, Israel, and even Egypt. This extensive network not only brought in goods, but also facilitated a cultural exchange that enriched the Minoan way of life. 
But as with many ancient societies, the Minoans faced their twilight. Around 1450 BCE, their dominance began to wane. But what led to their decline? Natural disasters play a lead role in theories about their downfall. The eruption of the Thera volcano, one of the most powerful in human history, is believed to have had catastrophic effects on Crete. The ensuing tsunami and ash fallout would have decimated crops, disrupted trade, and caused widespread chaos. Yet, Mother Nature might not be the sole reason. The emergence of the Mycenaeans from mainland Greece posed a significant challenge. As they expanded their influence, the balance of power shifted. There's evidence to suggest the Mycenaeans took over many Minoan centers, either through conquest or assimilation. Despite their decline, the Minoans left an indelible mark on history. Their art, architecture, and myths have been sources of fascination and inspiration for millennia. As we wander through the remnants of their palaces or lose ourselves in their tales, we're reminded of the transient nature of civilizations and the lasting legacies they can leave behind. In the high deserts of the American Southwest, amidst the rugged terrains of modern-day Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico, echoes of an ancient culture linger. Here, tucked into the mesas, cliffs, and canyons, we find remnants of a civilization that once thrived but then mysteriously receded, the ancestral Puebloans. Often recognized by their earlier designation, the Anasazi, the ancestral Puebloans were a complex society that flourished from roughly AD 100 to 1600. This time frame, while broad, encompasses a rich tapestry of development, innovation and adaptation to the challenging desert environment. One of the most distinctive architectural achievements of the ancestral Puebloans was their cliff dwellings. These structures, like those found in Mesa Verde National Park, are intricate communities carved into the alcoves of towering sandstone cliffs. Crafted with precision, these dwellings provided protection from the elements and potential adversaries. Complementing these cliff homes were ceremonial chambers known as kivas, subterranean spaces where religious rites and social gatherings took place, emphasizing the spiritual dimension of their lives. Beyond their iconic cliff homes, the ancestral Puebloans demonstrated a sophisticated understanding of agriculture. Despite the arid climate, they developed farming techniques that harnessed every drop of precious water. Terraced gardens, check dams, and irrigation systems allowed them to cultivate maize, beans, and squash, a trio often referred to as the Three Sisters, which became the staple of their diet. Artistically, they were no less accomplished. Their pottery, characterized by intricate black and white designs, wasn't just functional but symbolically significant, often carrying motifs related to their myths and cosmology. Petroglyphs and pictographs, images carved or painted onto stone surfaces, also bear testament to their rich cultural narrative, weaving stories of their beliefs, daily life, and the world around them. However, around the end of the 13th century, something shifted. The once bustling cliff dwellings and mesa top villages began to show signs of rapid abandonment. Scholars and archaeologists have long pondered this exodus. While no single reason can be pinpointed, a combination of prolonged drought, resource depletion, social upheaval, and possible external threats might have compelled them to seek greener pastures. As they migrated, they didn't vanish into the annals of history but rather evolved, giving rise to the modern Pueblo cultures we recognize today. Their descendants, the Hopi, Zuni, and Rio Grande Pueblo people, continue to honor the legacy of the ancestral Puebloans, maintaining many of their traditions, rituals, and the spirit of resilience that once echoed through the mesas and canyons of the Southwest. Nestled in the heart of Southeast Asia, spanning across modern-day Cambodia and parts of Vietnam, Laos, and Thailand, lies the footprint of one of history's most remarkable empires, the Khmer Empire. This civilization, flourishing between the 9th and 15th centuries, is often overshadowed by its contemporaries, yet its contributions to art, architecture, and culture resonate powerfully even today. The dawn of the Khmer Empire can be traced back to the reign of Jayavarman II in the late 9th century. Establishing his capital at Hariharalaya, near the modern town of Roluos, Jayavarman II delayed the foundation for an empire that would dominate the region for over 600 years. Under his leadership and the monarchs that followed, the Khmer Empire experienced an era of unprecedented growth and prosperity. Central to the legacy of the Khmer Empire are its architectural marvels. 
The most iconic among them is the temple complex of Angkor Wat. This vast structure, originally dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu, exemplifies the Khmer architectural style with its intricate base reliefs, towering spires and expansive courtyards. But Angkor Wat is just the crown jewel in the larger city of Angkor, which was once the world's largest urban center. The city's ruins, scattered across the Cambodian landscape, are a testament to its past grandeur with temples like Ban, known for its serene stone faces, and Ta Prom, a fusion of nature and architecture as trees intertwine with ancient stones. Yet the Khmer Empire wasn't solely about magnificent structures. The empire's intricate water management system, consisting of canals, moats, and vast reservoirs called barres, showcased their understanding of hydrology. This advanced system not only provided water for daily use and irrigation, ensuring multiple rice harvests annually, but also symbolized the cosmic sea, reflecting their spiritual beliefs. The Khmer Empire's cultural and spiritual fabric was a blend of indigenous beliefs and outside influences. Initially rooted in Hinduism with deities like Vishnu and Shiva revered, the empire gradually embraced Mahayana and later Theravada Buddhism. This transition is visible in the art and inscriptions from the period, depicting a synthesis of religious motifs. However, as with all great empires, the sunset on the Khmer era eventually came. By the end of the 15th century, the empire began to fragment. External pressures, notably from the Thai kingdoms to the west, played a role in its decline. Additionally, environmental factors like changing waterways and possibly over-exploitation of the land may have contributed to the empire's gradual fall. The Khmer Empire's decline wasn't an abrupt end, but a gradual transition. While the capital and political power shifted, the cultural and spiritual legacies persisted. Modern-day Cambodia is deeply rooted in this rich heritage. Every sunrise over Angkor Wat, every dance move in the traditional Apsara performance, and every thread in the fabric of Cambodian life carries whispers of the grandeur and mysteries of the Khmer era an era where the blend of art, spirituality and innovation painted a vivid picture of human potential.